Hi everyone, my name is Matt Miller. I'm an occasional instructor at the Acting Studio Chicago. And today I'm very excited to chat with uh, the actress Molly Coons. Um, Molly, actually, I like to call this out right at the beginning of these interviews, Molly took a, a workshop at the Acting Studio back in the day when she was based in Chicago, but now she lives in LA, has been there for a few years and uh, has quite a, a lovely resume going. Uh, some recent credits include a great supporting role in Widows opposite Colin Farrell, um, a wonderful uh, indie film that is near and dear to my heart uh, called The Wise Kids uh, that was written and directed by Stephen Cohn, also an acting studio uh, Chicago instructor. And uh, I'm very excited to have you here today, welcome. Thank you, Matt, I'm excited to be here. And the big thing we're talking about today is you have a movie coming out in which you are the lead. And uh, unlike some of your previous co-stars like Viola Davis and Colin Farrell, um, these, are, these are a little different, these co-stars in this movie. So uh, without further ado, I wanted to just play the trailer for our viewers so they can see it. And then we can talk more specifically <laughs> about, uh, about the challenges of making The Wolf and the Lion. Uh, here's the trailer. We're very sorry for your loss. Grandpa was all I had left. You didn't do things like other people. I made a new friend recently, a she-wolf. She goes around the house a lot. What are you doing? It's okay. You've got a pup. I'm following a falling star. Hey. Force Ranger Simpson. I heard there was a plane crash. It's pretty terrible. The plane was carrying a lion cub bought by a circus. We haven't found it yet. Keep on searching. Joe, you have to come and see this. There's a wolf pup, a lion cub, and... What the hell is that? It's one of Grandpa's girlfriends. What? They're inseparable. <laughs> the she-wolf didn't come back. I'll have to take care of them myself. You have no right to them. Give me back my lion. I'll never let anything happen to you. How are you going to look after them when they're older? I have to protect them. They love each other. I'll get my lion back one way or another. Stop! I'll find a way home. Find a way home. This was a movie that was produced by Studio Canal in France. It's already out in France and doing quite well from what I hear. And, uh, and is now just slated to be released in the States in uh, early 2022. So that's super exciting. Um, mm -hmm. And as you can see from the trailer, uh, some, some fairly interesting co-stars that you had to work with. Yes, my furriest yet, I would say. <laughs> um, yeah, this film was an extraordinary experience. I, I honestly couldn't believe it when, when I was sent the, the breakdown by my agents. Um, and, and that's really my first question for you is leading into this. I think most of the actors who are watching this will immediately be wondering what was the audition process like for a movie in which you're going to be working with a real wolf and a real lion very intimately. Um, Tell us a little bit about the process of, of how you got this role and, and what the auditions were like. So I auditioned for this back in 2018. Wow. Um, I sent in a self-tape initially. And when I got to the final round of the self-tapes, um, they, they then had me go and meet the animal trainer as like the next round. Gotcha. Of auditions. So really, um, the self, an undirected self-tape that you submitted that was kind of the first first uh, step in the process? It was. Very yeah. cool. Uh, <laughs> so then the next stage, as you mentioned, meeting with an animal trainer, which is not usually what the next stage of, a, of an audition process entails, but uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so I had, I had done the self-tape and then I had kind of a brief like Skype meeting with the director of the film. Mm -hmm. And he, he asked me some questions, you know, how, what are you doing over the next two years? Because that's how long this film is going to be in production. And wow. 
does the idea of a lion jumping on you scare you? And I thought like, yes, <laughs> it does. Is this a trick question? <laughs> does he want me to say it doesn't scare me? Um, he then said, okay, we're gonna have you meet with um, Andrew Simpson, our animal trainer for the film. He was shooting John Wick at the time. Um, now, I want to stop for a second, because Andrew Simpson is like a name in terms of animal trainers, correct? Yeah, he's the wolf guy. He Got did it. The Revenant, he did Game of Thrones, um, he did and John Wick, mm -hmm. all the those movies. So he's the guy you go to for wolves. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I didn't have anything, they didn't have me prepare anything, it was just go down to this warehouse just meet with andrew he just wants to get a sense of your energy mm -hmm. and this would become a big thing throughout the entire audition process it's about your energy mm -hmm. and i think as an actor that's really intimidating to hear that you know because it takes away the shield that we like to put up mm -hmm. when we're in character mm -hmm. And there's a comfort in feeling like, okay, I can go in in character. And all of that was had, was and had to be for this process stripped away. Um, it had to be just, what do we think of your energy as a person? How are you going to connect with these animals? And so... Because there, there's an issue with wolves in particular with with kind of, you know, human artifice. If they, you know, if they feel like you're not being authentic, is that what I think we're driving at? There's, there's yeah. a problem there if, if they feel like you're acting. Yes, which is exactly <laughs> the challenge too. Um, they, they can tell whether or not, you know, they can tell when you're being weird, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like, well, I guess I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I went, I went to go meet with Andrew and the idea was he knows within five minutes of talking to somebody, whether or not the wolves will respond well to them. Gotcha. And so that was my, my test basically. Um, and I, I went up to him, he was working with some of the dogs that they work with on uh, John Wick they were running some drills and stuff and the dogs came up to me and I was like, you know, these are big dogs. And, okay. Hi. Um, and Andrew asked me, have you, have you worked with animals or, and I said, I don't, I know this is a huge opportunity and I know I want this part, but I have to be honest with you. Like, I'm not, I don't think I'm an animal person. And I've never had a pet. Yeah, you've never had a pet. That's, unre that's, I mean, how scary to go into a situation like that. And yeah. I mean, I, I think that's a great lesson though of like the honesty that you brought into that conversation. That's really hard to do as an actor when a job is on the line, but also your safety is potentially very much on the line if you are not honest. Um, exactly. Yeah, and that was something I, I, I was just like, I can't, I, I don't, I can't lie to you. Um, I don't, I don't know that I'm the right person for this. I don't know that I'm an animal person. Mm -hmm. I've never considered myself especially brave or daring, you know, in situations with apex predators, especially. <laughs> um, and I, I was like, you know, I'm just going to lay all my cards on the table because it doesn't be benefit anybody here if I lie. And he was like, you know, thanks for being honest. And I know that you think you're not an animal person, but I think you are. And I've worked, you know, and he said, I've worked with wolves for 30 years. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that you're not an animal person. I think it's that you haven't had the opportunity. And uh, he just said, do you, do you trust me? Uh -huh. 
you know? And I was like, yeah. And he said, okay, because there's, if you don't trust me, there's no point in us doing any of this. Wow. And <laughs> what a conversation to have uh, yeah. <laughs> as part of an interview process for a job. <laughs> are, yeah. you, are you comfortable with lions jumping on you? Do you trust me with your life? That's the yeah. questions that we're asking. <laughs> It's <laughs> a part of this audition process. <laughs> okay, so you have that very intense conversation with him in which you are very honest about your experience level. And I, you you told me something once um, when we were talking about this about how he, he said he preferred that in some cases that you did not have experience. Yes, yes. And that was also so bizarre to me I because I said to him, look, I've I've never had any animals. I had a a fish once <laughs> um and quite honestly i like my roommates had a couple cats and i wouldn't say i cared for them <laughs> so i'm not sure that you know yeah um maybe you should get one of these people who is just animal crazy and they have 10 cats and three dogs and he said you know i appreciate you saying this but truthfully it's better for me because people will approach the wolves like their dogs mm -hmm. and they will try to and he says i see this all the time it's a very common mistake that people make they try to approach the wolves like their dogs and talk to them the way that they talk to their dog at home and play with them in the same manner and put on this um you know when people talk to yeah, puppies yeah. especially it's like oh did you do Mm -hmm. Your animal. And he says, sure. if you do this with a wolf, they're going to be like, why are you being weird, man? What's, <laughs> what's this like high pitched voice thing about? And your energy shifted. And it's oh, interesting. They don't, they will not actually respond well to that. And he said, you're a blank slate for me, which is great because you don't have any preconceived ideas of what you think you should do with, with wolves or with canines you're just going to be the easiest for me to train mm -hmm. because i can tell you this is how you this is how they communicate with you this is how you touch them this is how you approach them um and you know you'll just be soaking up everything that i tell you and so it will make the process easier and that was surprising to me yeah but I can I can see his point. I can see how that, as a trainer, in some ways, is a pre it would be preferable to not have to work with an actor to unlearn <laughs> bad yeah. uh, in in some way. So that that does make sense. Um, all right. So you you had this this conversation with him. Mm -hmm. um, what's the next stage in the process um, of of going towards this role? So I talked with Andrew and I got the um the okay from him mm -hmm. as far as you know this person because they had met um they had met with a previous actress who andrew just said like this energy is not gonna fly oh wow it's not gonna go so um so that's not an easy bar to clear actually with andrew like i get i guess not yeah yeah um so then he said we're the next stage of the process is the callback. Mm -hmm. We're going to fly you up to Canada to his land with his wolves. Um, he has this massive amount of land in rural uh, Calgary. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, you're going to go up with the director and go to my land and go into the enclosure with the wolves. And we're just going to see how they like you. <laughs> and I said, so do I need to, to do anything or should I, you know, he says, nope, they'll either like you or they won't and nothing that you do will change their minds. And if they like you, it's a go. And if they don't, it'll never work. And this can't happen. Wow. So, so no pressure, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> So you go to Canada, you go out to this wide open field and you sit down in this field and actually you were kind enough to find some of the call the callback footage from this audition. Yeah. And I want to play that now. So here's a little snippet 
um, Molly's <laughs> callback for The Wolf and the Lion. Here you go. Okay, so um, wow. So you're you're you were just sitting in this field, and tell me about that experience. The wolves were not near you at the beginning, yes? Yeah, I think they were walking away away from yeah. me for part of the time, and I was like, oh my gosh, I guess they don't like me. But part of me felt a little relief too. Uh -huh. Like okay, this you know. This is not my I guess it's just not meant to be, right? Yeah. Like it's yeah. not. Uh -huh. um, and then eventually they they came over and slowly but surely they were like, okay, well, I'll take this tree, you know, figure you out. Uh -huh. And um, there are shots later on. I don't know if I sent you these pictures, but um, I actually got to go up and like yeah. touch um that was the wolf from the revenant oh very cool yeah toes. yeah very famous wolf i was honored to be <laughs> in his presence with, you only work with a-list wolves only a-list wolves yeah <laughs> i worked with the game of thrones wolves too you know ghost wow was, uh, very cool not to name drop but, yeah but you know gotta get my plug in cool. <laughs> right, so so the callback goes well and mm -hmm. it sounds like the wolves respond to you and there's there's some good interaction there um, what's the next part of that process then? Um, the director is there, obviously, I think watching this. Yeah, he sent the tapes to Studio Canal. Um, they, they said, great, we, we love it, we love her. And the director said, let's go to dinner. And at dinner, he um, offered me the role. He wow, just that doesn't said, happen very often that way yeah he just said like to me you are alma fantastic wow um so you you get this role um the contract gets negotiated uh and then cut to a couple months later this happens Okay, so that's adorable and also mildly terrifying, maybe. Um, <laughs> so now you have to go into a process of learning how to work with these these animals, the wolf and the lion. Um, it seems like you were there when they were born or very close to it. Tell, tell me about this process of developing a relationship with them. Yeah, I met them when they were five weeks old. And there were uh, four wolves and two lions mm -hmm. because it's it's kind of like child actors. You need to have multiples. Um, partially because, of course, like if if one is in a bad mood, doesn't want to film, doesn't want to work, sometimes they just don't have any interest in it, and we would never force them to to work or to come to set or to perform if they didn't want to. Um, oh, no. So, so if they were not feeling it that day, there was just no filming that would happen. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. That's uh, why the time commitment was so extreme. Mm -hmm. Because we had to allow for a lot of flexibility in working with them. Um, if they, if they didn't want to work, we just didn't film that. And, you know, maybe we can salvage it and film something else without them. But Sometimes it just wasn't going to happen and we didn't force it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I met them five weeks old. And in that clip, you see Paddington. He was always the one chewing my toes. <laughs> and it looks cute, but those are sharp little teeth. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. Um, <laughs> no, I would spend hours just bonding with them outside of filming that was a huge part of the process any month that we weren't filming i would fly up to canada for a weekend for bonding sessions with them so that i could keep 
you know, we could keep in touch. I could keep track of their growth. I would learn how their personalities are developing, how, you know, the new tricks they're learning, the new ways they're trying to wow. sneak around, you know, <laughs> big thing. Yeah, the trouble they're getting into, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Um, I, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about just acting with animals um, is is such a challenge. In some way, it's like the 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 epitome of uh, improv, you know, of taking what you get versus what you expect and truly being a good and deep listener <laughs> to your scene partner, which in this case is a, is a wolf or a lion or both. Um, it, it, tell me about that experience and, and how you would approach a scene knowing that like they might not do what they're supposed to do. And, um, uh, you know, I'm sure that happened. Tell me a little bit about that process. Yeah, it really was. I thought the most difficult part would be being afraid of them. And it really wasn't at all. The, the hardest part was acting with them mm -hmm. and trying to manage my own expectations and my, my own ideas of what acting <laughs> is. Um, because I've always been an actor that kind of prepares and mm -hmm. that is, I've prepared the scene. I know what moments I want to hit. I know what's going on between, you know, the dynamic of the characters. And like, I really enjoy feeling prepared. And there was nothing I could do to prepare for this. It was, it was like constant improv. And it, it's also the animals are so intuitive and they have you're managing their different energies mm -hmm. first of all they're not going to do what like they're never really going to do exactly what they're supposed to be doing when they're little because they're like little kids they want to run around and play they yeah. you know they don't understand like hit your mark and <laughs> um not yet anyway um and Kind of like how I had mentioned before with the, the wolf's energy is very high and the lion's is very low. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of trying to give each of them what they needed from me mm -hmm. as like they, one of their caretakers, but trying to at least get some of the emotion of the scene across for the audience. And it could be, I think, difficult to, um, you know, if I'm upset in a scene or something, it, it was difficult sometimes because they would be so excited to see me mm -hmm. and what I want to give them back, you know, they're like, hi, 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 oh my gosh, yeah. it's you, you know, and I want to give them back. That hi, boy, yes, yeah, I, oh. yeah it's, I, I love you too, you know. Um, but I couldn't, and you can see the kind of, or for me, I could feel this confusion with them, mm. um, especially, especially the wolves. They're very, um, sensitive and intuitive. Wow. And so it, yeah, it was extremely difficult, I think, to, to constantly reinvent the scene as you as you go it, it was like the strangest improv i've ever done yeah <laughs> i can um, believe it um you know in some ways like you, your scene partners are are just completely honest they cannot be dishonest yeah. um but as you're saying that makes it so challenging then for you to try and drive a story forward and know that like there are story points you need to hit in a scene but if they're not cooperating, like how does this shift in order for us to kind of get from point A to point B? Yeah. Uh, and there were a lot of parts of the script and scenes that ended up being rewritten or being adjusted yeah. and um, whole story plot points that, you know, changed. Yeah. Because of who they, who the animals grew up to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm, um, I'm sure you've got some wonderful moments that were completely unanticipated too, that probably made the final cut of the movie. <laughs> but uh, 
that's that's kind of what's interesting about the medium is like you you're looking to capture lightning in a bottle and when you get it um and recognize it the the script has to <laughs> retroactively change to accommodate that in this case i think yeah there were like extremely beautiful moments because that could only have happened because we really had that relationship and i think that's that is part of the magic when you see it like yeah um we didn't fake anything we didn't put peanut butter on my face so they would come up and, and lick my face you know we didn't um we didn't have to and i think that you can see that uh -huh. and you can also the relationship between the two of them they really loved each other yeah i mean that's pretty clear just even in the trailer to see the affection from those two animals is is yeah. real it's palpable um how were they together on set i mean were they just did they distract each other were uh was it easier to shoot with with them separated or was <laughs> them together actually helpful um i would say the spontaneous scenes that are just um where there's not a direct action that needs to be completed were easier to film mm -hmm. uh with them together because they just goof around together you know <laughs> they they like to play with each other and you know run around and explore and um you don't even have to do anything just put a camera on them and uh -huh. it's <laughs> and it's amazing yeah um the scenes that were difficult well it was the scenes were easy for the wolf when we had a direct action when sure. he had to go hit a mark mm -hmm. um because we could rehearse those things and we had rehearsed them in our bonding sessions over the course of several months like he and i had practiced running together to get to a certain spot and then i bend down and pet him a little bit and he knows that he keeps standing there and then you know he he gets a treat um and he was good at um completing tasks yeah the lion it was a constant struggle it was constantly pulling teeth to be like come over you know he's just like i don't get it why would i do that why would i go over there when i i could just be here yeah um how how long were your shooting days they were uh short compared with every other project i've been on you know i'm i'm accustomed to 12 hour days or mm -hmm. 14 or what have you um the animals never shot more than i think it was four hours a day wow. and a very brief amount of time to try and yeah. get what you need yeah it it was really so much of how we arranged the schedule was to be respectful towards them and to make everything accommodating for them. Um, you know, and they, if they didn't want to shoot, they didn't have to. <laughs> and when we were on set, everyone was always completely silent. Mm. Um, there was no talking on set when they were around because it could be agitating for them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they just uh, wouldn't like the energy on set and would just walk off. And we were like, okay, Doesn't not happen. not happening today. But yeah, we didn't shoot with them more than I think for maybe five hours a day and always in the morning when they had the most energy and they were in the best mood. Um, but then I would continue, you know, we would continue to film other things yeah. without them. But it was a much more relaxed filming schedule than what I'd experienced before. And I think part of that is that it was a French production, largely, you know, they just do it differently over there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And of course, there's there's real limitations with the animals in terms of uh, their safety and their welfare. Yeah. Um, uh, this is also fascinating. Um, 
let's see, I, I think we have time for a couple more questions. Do you have any advice for actors who might be auditioning for a project in which they know they're going to be working with an animal? Is there anything that, that you would pass along as good tips to know or to anticipate when you're heading into a, a production where you know you'll be working with an animal? Yeah, I think um, obviously maintaining respect for them as, you know, as beings and is, is extremely important, but I think trusting your instincts mm -hmm. and knowing that like it needs to, it needs to feel right when you're working with them and, you know, like it's just an energy exchange and really that's, I think acting is that way for me a lot of the time with humans yeah. too and we lose sight of that but um there's no way to avoid the truth of that energy exchange with working with the animals mm -hmm. and like i think it's important to to really listen to them you know to try to be in tune with how they're feeling to have an enormous amount of patience um and tolerance and to and to be open to the the very real possibility that you'll have to improvise or be spontaneous and um knowing like yeah knowing the beats of the scene or knowing your character well enough that you can go with the flow and improvise whatever might happen yeah, it's that that great ability to be fully prepared and then willing to throw all of that preparation <laughs> out the window yeah. uh, in the next moment, if needs be. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's great advice and a great thing to keep in mind. Um, one final question for you. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, are you still in touch with, uh, with your boys, as you call them, uh, Paddington and Walter? Yes, my boys, I am. Um, I wasn't able to visit them that they, they all they live now up in Canada on this like huge expanse of land um and the production has paid for the rest of their natural lives for them to oh, be cool. cared for and to be um with Andrew and I'm I have an open invitation to go visit but with COVID the border was closed so yeah. I haven't seen them since we wrapped in 2020 um but i'm trying to plan a trip up there in the next couple months and i'll still be able to go in with all four of the the wolves and i probably won't go in with the lions at this point yeah um because I'm they're sure they'll be thrilled to see you though <laughs> yeah yeah i i hope you'll update us when uh you are able to connect with them. <laughs> And uh, we'll all be yeah. working on a video. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds uh, good. Thank you so much for making time today. And uh, again, The Wolf and the Lion will be in theaters and I'm sure streaming uh, in early 2022. So keep, a, keep an eye out for that. But uh, Molly, thank you so much. This was really, really cool and very interesting to chat with you today. It was great to see you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. All right.